Hello, everyone. Today is May 4th, and tomorrow there, there's going to be an exact conjunction between the Sun and Uranus at 40, Taurus 14 degrees 47. Uh, the exact uh, conjunction occurs at 8.05 London time, so you can calculate uh, your own um, uh, your own uh, position, very what time it's going to be. And uh, when I mentioned this to one of my friends in London, we spoke yesterday that I'm going to put together a video for the occasion. She mentioned the name earthquake. And I said to, I immediately said, not exactly, although yes, Uranus has a say in earthquakes, certainly, but I consider Saturn Uranus um, conjunctions and, and, and Saturn Uranus. Um, aspects more like earthquake earthquake like uh, because the sun has a different uh, role in the space time it usually uh, enlarges things in a different way than uranus uh, or jupiter because uh, because it simply highlights it it energizes things jupiter enlarges and puts things out of proportion by the sun uh, uh, fills it with energy and consciousness so what is really happening is not physical earthquake, much more like ideolog ideological or, or a social earthquake. So what I expect is throughout the world uh, is people revolting also within the family or uh, the friend circle or, or at, at uh, your workplace or school. You all of a sudden will be filled with some some sort of rebellious energy that you no longer are going to put up with this or that. Um, be careful with this, especially if you have things around 15, 14, 15 degrees in the uh, fixed signs, because you can actually manifest uh, some sort of revolt or even violence. Now let's take a look at the energy pattern. Um, I prepared. Uh, Word file for you. So here's here's the exact uh, London time at 8.05 uh, a.m. And these are the highlights of the London chart. On the ascendant, we have a, a Cancer two degrees, two, three degrees ascendant. And spot on, you see uh, the, the black moon lit it, which recently entered um, uh, Cancer and will be there for another eight months, eight and a half months. And the sun Oh, sorry, the moon has just crossed over the ascendant and uh, black moon in it. The moon in, in Cancer is very, very strong. It's in its, its own sign and it's highlighting um, the uh, this type of energy, which is about stamina, endurance, uh, knowing what's right, doing what's right, and also clairvoyance. You may remember that uh, in, in comic astrology, we have three types of Liliths. One is the asteroid Lilith. It denotes revolt against injustice. Uh, the dark moon Lilith, which uh, in which um, in the myth, Lilith accepts Yahweh's curse upon herself and doesn't go back to the Garden of Eden. And then the black moon Lilith, which is the returning goddess who, enters, again, enters the Garden of Eden, Eden in, in the form of a serpent and rescues um, the knowledge, the feminine knowledge, uh, so to speak. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's an interesting uh, legend. It has very many connotations and the London chart has little rising. So uh, this energy pattern is going to be there at your disposal. Here's the, the sun Uranus conjunction. On the mid heaven, you have the Saturn Vesta conjunction, which is still very tight, uh, and it's still squaring the nodal axis. So you still have this uh, karmic cage, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And uh, the um, Mars Australia conjunction is separating already. Mars is twice faster than Australia or the uh, the asteroids in general. So uh, I didn't highlight that because what I, I wanted to do, you to look at, especially when you're studying astrology, uh, here's a beautiful example of a midpoint structure, very visible. You can detect it very easily because if they are far away from each other, if two plants are far away uh, from each other, it's much 
harder to see the midpoint. Just to show you something, uh, for instance, I, th I have a suspicion that the Lilith Chiron midpoint is exactly the Sun Uranus conjunction. I haven't looked at it, but this is how you look. And here you can see that uh, Jupiter is exactly at the midpoint of Venus Neptune. Now, Venus is harmony, love, uh, money, uh, well being, um, security. And Neptune is higher love, universal love, transcendence, uh, clairvoyance, esoteric knowledge, things like that. And Jupiter, as I said, enlarges everything it touches. Uh, and uh, by uh, being at the midpoint of the two love planets, it may actually bring us some harmony. So uh, this is a this is not a very nice space time moment. Um, Sun Uranus is always disruptive, and by the way, it it, it usually takes three days because uh, um, at least three days, because there's a one to one and a half degree applying and the, another one to one and a half, half degree separating uh, to this energy. And as you see, if you look around the world, violence just erupted many in many ways. I'm not going to discuss this anymore because uh, I try to give, I try, I try to, to, to save myself the, uh, um, uh, the aggravation of talking about the war. I said what I said. I, uh, you know what I think. Uh, I still believe that uh, the, the, the way I, I, I actually try to tell this to my friends here in Hungary, that uh, please understand that Russians are not our enemies and the Ukrainians are not our friends. Uh, and I'm talking about Hungarians and Europeans. Um, that's all I say. And there's, a, there's hope that uh, some people will understand this. At least I really hope. Now let's take a look at the um, planetary picture linked to um, the Sun Uranus conjunction. In the Budapest chart, if you uh, want to look at the, uh, of course it's in Magyar, in Hungarian, so you won't understand it, but in, in a Hungarian chart, we have an exact ascendant at 15 degrees Cancer. So uh, it's a much more complex planetary, planetary picture. Here you really, what you see here is a non-closing um, mini trapeze. So it's actually a dissolved square. The dissolved sphere uh, is a sextile and a semi-sextile, and Chiron is dissolving this energy. This, the, the square itself is in uh, between Mars and, and um, Lilith. And I left there Australia because it, this shows you how if one thing closes uh, the pattern, then uh, the, the, uh, even the looser conjunctions will be there, will have a say in the matter. And you also have an, a mini angel wing. That's the tiniest of the uh, planetary pictures. Sun Uranus uh, um, sextiling Mars, and Chiron is the at the apex. And Chiron in in Aries is is very disruptive. It is very um, dangerous. It, it brings up to the surface uh, all the um, karmic wounds around wars, violence, aggression, um, pain blood, fire, uh, weapons. That's, that's exactly what you are seeing in the world uh, yet again. Um, it takes uh, Chiron about 50 to 51 years to rotate around the sun. So the, the, the Chiron return uh, for everyone is around 50, 51 years uh, of age. And um, it approximately is around four, five years in one sign, but in Aries, it takes 12 years uh, to uh, cross it. So you can tell that this is, this is, this is where our most our, our comic ones come from. Here are the transcendental celestial objects linked to this um, placement uh, on the sun. You have two asteroids and two fixed stars. The two fixed stars were there or have been there for a while in Uranus, and now the sun has reached them, Menkar and Almach. Menkar is Alpha Cetus. It occupies the liminal space between um, Aries and Taurus and overtakes this particular portion of the, um, of the zodiac. And it means it is linked to the subconscious merge, coming to emerging, coming to the surface. And Almach is Gamma Andromeda. Almach in Hebrew means a uh, very young woman who has not yet been uh, commissioned to a marriage. So it, it, it's the, um, 
the place where the feminine uh, can heal and can um, be creative. And you have also two asteroids on the sun, Uranus, Eros, and Hubris. Hubris in Greek mythology uh, describes the behavior when the, the hero or heroine is revolting against the wish of gods and they are invariably punished. Uh, so, um, and, and <laughs> so the space time moment is even more disruptive simply because uh, hubris is also there. Uh, and if you look around, this is exactly what's happening to us. Uh, mankind has been really, really revolting against uh, the, the divine order and, and uh, the wish of the gods. And then Eros is an interesting entity because uh, when Gaia uh, emerges from chaos, from nothingness, and uh, creates herself, she is also creating three other entities. Nyx, Erebus, and Eros. Nyx is the night, Erebus is darkness. These two emerging with Gaia uh, symbolize the fact that whenever you are creating something on the manifested level, on the physical, uh, on the um, uh, material level, there's always darkness. There's always uh, this dark energy. You can't get rid of the dark energy on the manifest in the manifested world on the manifested level. And uh, the third entity is uh, is eros, uh, physical um, desire, uh, which means that all and each and every creation needs physical desire. This is how we start. If you don't desire something, it's not going to happen. On uh, Chiron, you have Lancelot, the knight, the knight in shining armor, and Alpharat, which is Alpha Andromeda. And this is one of the healing birds of suicide victims. Uh, so it's going to get triggered in this uh, particular placement. On Mars, you have Themis and Ahernar. And Ahernar is um, uh, the um, uh, alpha star of the longest constellation, Eridanus, the Celestial River. Uh, the Celestial River sets off at um, the um, Celestial Equator and goes all the way down almost to the South Pole. And Ahernar's in comic astrology symbolizes a beautiful journey that you set off by leaving equilibrium, be, by leaving divine balance, leaving your comfort zone and entering on, on a quest and um, um, doing all what needs to, what, whatever it takes to reach its final destination where you get this beautiful bright star, the, the brightest star in this constellation showing that if you put enough energy and effort, if you're willing to leave your comfort zone, if you're willing to, to really do your quest, you will have some sort of beautiful uh, gift at the end. On uh, Australia, you have Hermes and Darius. Hermes, uh, um, of course, magical uh, pro pro properties and Darius wealth, immense wealth. And what else did I not mention? Okay, Lilith. On Lilith, you have Virtus and Amor, vir virtues and love. So there is hope in this space time moment. Let's put it this way. There's also another uh, planetary picture which has been there for ages and it's still there. So I'm going to show you one more time. I promise not to show you again because actually it's separating. Ceres has moved out of this. Uh, it's already at 26 degrees. So I did not put in Ceres here because 20, at 23, 25 degrees, this is really kind of separating. You still have the fixed karmic cage. So you still have uh, time to get rid of your oaths and, and promises. Uh, Saturn Vesta conjunctions especially, but any Saturn Vesta um, aspect denotes uh, these is old oaths and 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 and, and uh, promises that you've made. I always call these stupid long words. Uh, I will always love you. I will never leave you. Things like that, and 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 all sorts of other oaths like chastity, poverty, um, um, whatever you name it. And these, whenever you said this in the past in previous lives, they are still binding you. So look around. Take a look, good look at yourself. Take a look at what is binding you. Try to, to realize that maybe this is an old oath and try to get rid of it. Okay, this is the time. This is the perfect time to get rid of old stuff and concentrate on the new stuff. 
this fixed karmic cages dissolved still by Neptune and also kind of by, by Aries. Uh, so Aries uh, the drastically altered outward circumstances is very much into play. Look around, look around your world. It's disrupting, it's falling apart. We have uh, hyperinflation, uh, especially gasoline is out of hands, really. We will have food shortages. Make sure you are uh, keeping some stuff in your cabinet. There will be food shortages uh, and it's going to be man-made, unfortunately. So they are, just look around, take a look at the news and you will understand what they are trying to do to us. And at the same time, Neptune is the smoke screen. It's also, oh, there's no problem. Oh, we are going to be fine. No, we are not going to be fine. So be prepared. And there's also an angel wing. So the focal point of this uh, planetary picture is really Neptune, okay? So let's take a look at the Neptune transcendental celestial objects. And there are many, many, really. Uh, on Neptune, you have Hatshepsut, who was the, fir the first and only documented fa female pharaoh. Gaia, the Earth Mother, Nagasaki, complete destruction, Arthur, the uh, Night King, Hestia, uh, the, the um, um, uh, High Priestess of, uh, of um, all kinds of ceremonies, Okiro, the, uh, the daughter of Chariklo and Chiron, who turned herself into a horse because she didn't want to get punished all the time for her special abilities. And Markab, Alpha Pegasus, which is bright ideas springing in out of your mind and coming into life. On Saturn, we still have Denebalgadi and Sadasud. Denebalgadi is Delta Capricornus, uh, its stamina, strength, uh, and Sadasud, the luckiest of lucky, uh, luckies, uh, Beta, Aquarius, uh, so they are still very tight there. And on the North Node, you still have Pelion, uh, a centaur denoting the place where centaurs live, the Mount Pelion, and it represents the mountain of life that you need to, need to climb. And indeed, in this space-time moment, this is exactly what we need to do. Pay attention to your life. It's going to be disruptive for these couple of days. Um, especially as, as I said, when you have things around 15, uh, 14, 15 degrees, it's going to separate by uh, the 6th of May and slowly this disruption uh, will kind of cease uh, to exist, but it's still uh, very tight on the, 40, or the 4th, 5th and 6th. It will be exact on the 5th. So be prepared, try to pay attention to your own stuff. Don't give in to urges uh, of breaking out or doing stuff that is really stupid. Uh, you may feel the urge, but calm down, take a cold shower, go for a walk. Uh, don't do stupid things because uh, two days from now, you may regret it. Thank you for listening. Bye.